I would say my, my big, my goal, someone asked me like, what's your goal for the, you know, the gym? I said, I want to get the 50 people in the company that don't work out that have never worked out into the gym. How do we do that? I can get anyone that wants to work out in the gym and I can, yeah, that's easy. That's not hard. And I can help. I can get people fitter, stronger, blah, blah, blah. That's fun. It's good. But I want to get the person that is sedentary and they're embarrassed. They're nervous. They're intimidated. Whatever it is that they have more negative self-talk than you could ever fathom. How do we get that person in the gym and they real and to realize that we're all we're all on the same playing field here. And you step foot in the gym, you're, you're fighting the same fight we are. This is episode number seventy-seven with Austin Maliolo. This episode is brought to you by ButcherBox. ButcherBox delivers 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken, and heritage-breed pork directly to your doorstep on your schedule. I personally think meat can have a place in a well-rounded diet, but there's a huge, huge difference when it comes to animals that are raised in feedlots and fed primarily corn and soy and routinely given growth hormones and antibiotics, and those that are responsibly raised, fed their natural diet of grass, and never given growth hormones or antibiotics. ButcherBox gives me some peace of mind, knowing that I can trust my meat is the highest quality out there and will also taste amazing. You can order curated or custom boxes of meat, and they always come with recipe ideas for you to explore. My husband Danny and I have paired our ButcherBox meats with vegetables from our local CSA, all but eliminating the need for grocery shopping. ButcherBox is extending an awesome offer to you for listening to Pursuing Health. You can get $20 off your order plus a free order of their delicious bacon by heading to butcherbox.com and using the code JULIE20 at the checkout. That's butcherbox.com and code J-U-L-I-E 20. Hope you check it out and that it makes your life a little bit easier just as it has done for me. This episode is brought to you by Mobility Wad. Do you struggle to get into good positions in your training and workouts? Are your movement compensations causing you undue pain and grief? MWOD's belief is that every human being should be able to perform basic maintenance on themselves. For nearly 10 years, Mobility Wad has been the go-to for the world's best athletes and teams. Do you know what hundreds of Olympic and world-class athletes, professional teams in the NFL, MLB, basketball, hockey, rugby, and soccer, and dozens of universities all have in common? They use Mobility Wad to train and compete at their best. I first took Dr. Kelly Surrett's movement and mobility course in 2013, and since then have read his books and followed his videos for ideas on how to address my own movement restrictions. But sometimes having all this information can become overwhelming, which is why I think the real genius is in the MWOD subscription. As part of this subscription, you have access to not only hundreds of hours of video content that can be filtered based on your specific questions, but also a daily 10 minute mobility WOD video. You just log in and follow Kelly's instructions as if he is there coaching you in person for 10 minutes per day. You may pick up certain exercises that you wish to incorporate on a regular basis before or after your workouts. But at the very least, by following this daily program, you know you are addressing a wide range of movement patterns and body parts on a regular basis without having to think about it. I often do these sessions first thing in the morning or before bed as a way to wind down from the day. In addition, you have access to an on-ramp sequence and a 14-day mobility challenge that helps you understand the basics and identify the areas you personally need to focus on. You can lean on the MWOD community and discussion boards to learn from others who have been through similar situations or injuries. And if you need more personalized help, you can use the MWOD list to find a like-minded practitioner in your area. It's easy to become part of the Mobility Wad community, but for being a Pursuing Health listener, you can receive 20% off an annual membership with code Julie Fouché. That's J-U-L-I-E-F-O-U-C-H-E-R. Just visit www.mobilitywad.com. Full potential, full power. Welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm Julie Fouché, family medicine resident and former CrossFit Games athlete. Here, I bring to you information and inspiration from experts and everyday individuals for how to use lifestyle to maximize health. Thank you so much for joining me. Now let's get started with this week's episode. Hey there, welcome back to Pursuing Health. In this episode, I got to sit down with Austin Maliolo, who is an individual who is truly leaning from the front in more facets of CrossFit than almost anyone else I've met thus far. 
Austin got a start in the fitness industry as a personal trainer, and he earned his bachelor's degree in exercise science. He then found CrossFit in 2009, and it wasn't long after that that he became a CrossFit coach and then started working on the CrossFit HQ seminar staff, where he's now a flow master and works nearly every weekend. He also is now the head coach at Reebok CrossFit One and has played a key role in the development of the employee health program at Reebok's headquarters. Austin is also an accomplished CrossFit Games athlete, a three-time winner of the Northeast Regional from 2011 to 2013, as well as a six-time CrossFit Games competitor, including individual finishes in the top 10 in 2010 and 2012, and a fifth-place finish as a member of Team Reebok CrossFit One in 2017. In his spare time, Austin owns and runs coaching development at Reebok CrossFit One Nation, and he also hosts an online training program called The Ham Plan. We sat down recently at the Reebok Athlete Summit, and we were able to catch up on how CrossFit has shaped the corporate culture of Reebok over the past several years, as well as how Austin's experiences as a youth taught him the importance of personal responsibility and surrounding himself with the right kind of people. Also, we talked about why Austin is just so driven to keep embracing the daily grind and biting off more than most people could even imagine chewing. It was a great conversation, and I think you'll really enjoy what Austin had to say. A few quick reminders before we get started. First, if you're enjoying the podcast, please head over to iTunes to subscribe and consider giving it a rating. I'm also always looking for inspiring stories to share. So if you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome a serious health challenge, please send your story to me at info at juliefouché.com and I'll select some to share here on future episodes. If you're looking to dial in your nutrition this January, there's also still time to join me in the free Healthy Self Reset program at healthyselfreset.com. I've teamed up with my good friend and functional dietitian nutritionist, Bridget Tickemeyer, as well as my husband and fellow MD, Danny, to bring you 28 days of recipes, meal plans, shopping lists, and workouts you can do anywhere with no equipment needed. We've also got an amazing new online ba- dashboard and a supportive community that will be active for three more weeks, so you don't want to miss out. Head to HealthySelfReset.com right now to sign up through February 12th. Finally, please remember that although I'm now officially a doctor, this podcast is meant to share the experiences of individuals and does not provide medical advice. So with that, here we go. Let's get started with episode number 77 of Pursuing Health featuring Austin Maliolo. Welcome to Pursuing Health. I'm super excited. I'm here with Austin Maliolo and this is very long overdue. Oh, I don't know about we have, that. We have a lot to talk about. But right now we're here at the Reebok Athlete Summit, mm-hmm. fifth year. And I want to talk a, a bit about your experience with Reebok because you've been a huge, you've played a huge role in the sort of the relationship between Reebok and CrossFit. Yeah. And how did you find yourself in that role? Like, how did you get started with Reebok? Oh, man. Yeah, it's, um, gosh, it's dating back to now. 2010 mm-hmm. when the partnership signed I think in 2009 and I wasn't in the uh in the fold quite yet but that was um and then went to the games in 2010 and then that's when Reebok was signing athletes that mm-hmm. the, the original um sort of roster and I got they asked me to come out to the headquarters in Canton and they said you know hey come out and I was like this is the coolest thing ever in yeah. the world like getting sponsored to work out or even the thought of it like you know Went out and saw the beautiful campus and, you know, they're like, oh, we're going to sign you. I was like, well, this is amazing. This you is know, great. Like, you yeah. want to <laughs> give me, you know, some free clothes and I'll work yeah. out and be a part of a brand. And they, at that time they had like a little gym. It was essentially like, it wasn't little, it was like, you know, 5,000 square feet, mm-hmm. but they just had some equipment in the corner of the room and they had some coaches from down the road that were just taking some people through CrossFit workouts. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, you know, hey, if you ever need you know, help coach and let me know. I was in Albany at the time. Okay. And, um, you know, just kind of threw you, you know, it's like, Oh, let me know. I didn't really think anything of it, but then, you know, sure enough, you know, they, they needed some help, uh, from a coaching perspective and they asked me to come out Mm -hmm. and that was like, that was a big move. Cause you know, I had a, you know, I was, I was coaching in, at Albany CrossFit and it was like, you know, it was a coaching gig, you know, getting Mm -hmm. paid to coach in 2010 was legit, you know, like it was pretty awesome into 2011 and then so I think February 2011 is when I moved to Boston to be a coach and that was how I got into the 
the fold from the, the Reebok perspective. And at that time, were you just, your role is just coaching or were you at that point, how did you like transition into what you're doing now? Yeah. So I just started out as just as a coach, Okay. Um, you know, and just coaching the classes mm-hmm. and, you know, essentially onboarding the company, okay. you know, from a, to, so like, to CrossFit. This is CrossFit. Yeah. You know, I mean, and at that time, were you teaching seminars too for CrossFit HQ? Yeah, so okay. I got on seminar staff in October of 2010. So, and I think I worked my first gig in early 2011. Mm-hmm. And, and so, you know, I was I was working for seminar staff, which I was you know brand new, and then uh, coaching okay. at uh, at Reebok Reebok CrossFit One. And so that was you know that at the time it's it's funny as you look back we're like that was like it was just mind blowing that that's what I'm doing you know yeah. and I'm actually coaching people and it's and it's what I wanted to do and it's it's happening and working out and training because mm-hmm. you know you go to the game once you want to go again right so and that that's kind of what we were training for and right and then you know and then the evolution from you know essentially 2010 to 2018 with the way we are now is you know, a lot has happened. A lot has changed. Mm-hmm. My role has changed a little bit at Reebok. Um, it's increased from the scope. I'm actually, I'm now in charge of the whole fitness facility. So wow. not only just the CrossFit gym, but the entire, um, you know, Reebok health and fitness center from the CrossFit gym to the traditional gym, to all the other health and wellness offerings that we, you know, we give to the employees mm-hmm. on site. Um, we moved campuses. Yeah, that's um, recent. And, yeah, which is, you know, we've been there really in full since January. Okay. You know, we, uh, we, we, the gym has been there since October, but it was a phased move. So okay. we, we now have all the employees on campus and, um, I, I had the honor to be a part of the, you know, essentially created the gym. Wow. Yeah. So, um, so the whole gym has moved over there. So, yeah. So what has that process been like? Or, yeah, it's, I mean, uh, it's obviously a different, like at, at Reebok or the old campus, you had so much space and yeah. so much outdoor space and all kinds of. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I described Canton as like a college campus, mm-hmm. you know, you know, in the, in the previous Reebok headquarters and it was a beautiful campus and we had a track, we had all that sort of stuff. Um, and you know, in moving to the seaport, which is where we are now in mm-hmm. Boston, it's, it's very different. Oftentimes people are like, why did you move? And, mm-hmm. you know, I think the, the, the answer is really simple. It's that. You know, Canton was it's, it's an island. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, if you ever, you know, you, you've you been out there and if anyone's ever been out there, it's not easy to get to. I mean, you got to fly to Boston mm-hmm. and do all this sort of stuff. And for a big brand with how many visitors we have, I mean, it's nice to be in the mix. Mm-hmm. You know, if I travel around the world and go to gyms all the time and usually it's the gyms closest to the airport. Right. 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 So it makes you know, travel a little easier. And, you know, Boston is a legit city. I mean, it's a hub. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... It's, I think that's a huge difference is you have a sprawling campus to a smaller campus. Mm-hmm. But with that said, I mean, we still have a 30,000 square foot facility. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's like we're, we were spoiled in in Canton, you mm-hmm. know, where, you know, we had 30 foot high ceilings. We mm-hmm. had a massive space. You know, we had essentially two gym spaces. Uh-huh. I think my favorite aspect of the new gym is that it's one facility. So the CrossFit gym and the traditional gym and our studios and the okay. locker rooms, everything's one. It's two floors, but mm-hmm. it's one gym. And that's, uh, that's, a, that's really important from a corporate culture perspective. Um, and certainly from a CrossFit perspective where oftentimes people look at CrossFit as, you know, oh, that's the CrossFitters, right. you know, those CrossFit crazies. Too and, intimidating, too intense. Right. Whereas now, you know, it's, you know, everyone that walks by the front desk, you know, we Sees see. Yeah. So we get to see a lot of new people, which is nice. That's where, awesome. You know, and, new, and and sometimes we're like, hey, well, you know, jump into a class if you want. So we mm-hmm. can, just, you know, like people sometimes like, yeah, sure, I'm in and mm-hmm. get to meet new people that way. That's awesome. Yeah. What has it done? What has CrossFit done for Reebok? Like, I mean, in general, but also just for the employees. No, because I know that's such a huge, I mean, I don't know what proportion, but a, a big proportion of employees now do CrossFit. Oh, yeah. You know, I think, you know, right now we have, I think, 650 people, you know, in, in their building in Boston. Mm-hmm. We have almost 550 of them are members of the gym. Okay. Now of that, I think we have like, you know, like 250 to 300 people that CrossFit regularly. Wow. Um, and I think the big, if you were to say, Hey, what's, what's the significance of that? What, how has CrossFit changed the culture of Reebok mm-hmm. and, and its community? Mm. You know, it's traditional gyms don't have community. I mean, that's the difference between CrossFit and mm-hmm. anything else where, I mean, you can go up, you know, can put your hat on, put your headphones on and get a great workout and you can kick your own butt and, and awesome. We, yep. we, we've all been there. But, you know, when you take 
the new class and you have the president of the brand next to interns, co-ops, temps, people mm-hmm. that have, you know, from, you know, legal to marketing to, you know, brand comms and, and, yeah. and they're chest bumping and high fiving. The transmission of culture is so profound and it humanizes everybody mm-hmm. and they get to meet one another. And now your growth within the company, those opportunities increase because you get to know people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the, the coolest thing. And it works. We get that. We mm-hmm. know it. If you do CrossFit, it works and it, it makes people healthy. And, mm-hmm. you know, like it's funny how that's not as big of a deal mm-hmm. as the community aspect, you know, and uh, I think that's at a culture perspective and at a, at a corporation, it's the most important. Mm-hmm. And quite, and quite honestly, I don't think that there's another global brand of Reebok size or bigger that does more for their employees from a health perspective. Mm-hmm. And I do, I've done a lot of research on it mm-hmm. and because that's, you know, I'm in the corporate wellness yeah. you know, sector now, yeah. if that's even such a thing. And, <laughs> and I think, you know, here's my, my favorite aspect of the new gym. And it also highlights how important health and fitness is to Reebok mm-hmm. and how it is transmitted to the employees is that if you're an employee, an employee benefit is you pay $75 a month for the gym, but every time you check in, mm-hmm. you get a, a credit, $7.50. Oh, wow. So if you check in 10 times in a month, in a month, you get a free gym membership. That's amazing. So essentially, we're incentivizing you to work out, mm-hmm. saying, hey, it's important yeah. to us for you to do this. We're going to subsidize your membership. Now, 75 bucks is, if you ever have a gym membership, That's it, great. it's yeah. great. That's the worst case scenario. Wow. And that's so much better than a free membership because you're encouraging people to go at least 10 times a month. Exactly. You know, and it's, uh, and then not only that, it's not, you know, like, you know, you you go to these huge corporations, they have great facilities. Mm -hmm. We have a full-time staff. We have eight full-time staff on, on, Mm -hmm. from that are are there all day. We have, you know, from, we have 11 to 12 CrossFit classes a day. We have a yoga studio, a fitness studio, a spin studio. We have a boxing ring. We have, Mm -hmm. you know, I think, you know, and across a day, we have 20 to 30 classes. Wow. And the, I mean, it's a massive staff that we have. And, you know, some of the best coaches in the world we have on our team, which is pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. And that's why people come. I mean, and even now, like in, in our new setup, we have, we all have coaches that will roam around in the open gym and help people, coach people. Mm-hmm. And because I'm a believer, I, I think the open gym model is criminal, in my opinion. The fact that we can just let people work out and give them no guidance. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make any sense. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, it seems right. unsafe, right? Like right. people like CrossFit's dangerous. I, does that, the argument doesn't make any sense to me. At least, even if the coach is awful, at least they're trying right. to There's help people. Right, some small improvement. Whereas when you go into a traditional gym, you know, <laughs> People pretty, can be doing anything. Anything, yeah. you know, <laughs> and they're making things up. I've never seen that movement before, right? <laughs> You know, so, you know, it's, so we're up there and we're, in, we're, we're engaging with people and it's, it's, it's pretty cool and like receptive. Like who would have thought people like help, right? right? Like, yeah, I'd, I'd love some help. <laughs> great. You know, awesome. Please, yeah. And I think that's the greatest, I think that's one of the things where, and a big push for me this year is to tell that story, mm-hmm. working with our communications team internally of, you know, how do we tell the world that I, I don't really, I don't, I, I don't know of any, any other brand that does that mm-hmm. and has much of an opportunity for their employees to work out essentially zero barrier to entry Mm -hmm. from an hour's perspective, classes offered. And we just started a beginner's fitness class where it's like, essentially you've never, you've never stepped from the gym where it's been 30 years. Mm -hmm. How do you start? I mean, that's, that's that's petrifying for people. Think about if you walked into a CrossFit gym at at one of our classes with 30 people, half them with their shirts off doing Mm -hmm. rope climbs. What are you going to say? Not for me. Too intimidating. That's right. So we have a beginner's fitness class where we just say, Hey, like, this is how you walk into the gym. Mm-hmm. This is what you do to start. Get a mm-hmm. hop on the treadmill and move for a little bit to warm up. Mm-hmm. Here's a stretch. You know, here's how you pick up a kettlebell off mm-hmm. the ground, a deadlift, you know, and. But know. using those same principles that, you know, it's just constantly very right. functional movements. It's scaled for the beginner, but That's without right. maybe that intimidation factor. And it, it's also how, cause it's, and it's, it's more psychological than physical. Oh yeah. You know, I mean. I would say my, my big, my goal, someone asked me like, what's your goal for the, you know, the gym? I said, I want to get the 50 people in the company that don't work out that have never worked out Mm -hmm. into the gym. How do we do that? Yeah. I can get anyone that wants to work out in the gym and I can, yeah, that's easy. That's not hard. Mm -hmm. 
and I can help, I can get people fitter, stronger, blah, blah, blah. That's fun. It's good. Yeah. But I want to get the person that is sedentary. Yeah. And they're embarrassed. They're nervous. They're intimidated. Whatever it is that mm-hmm. they have more negative self-talk than you could ever fathom. Mm-hmm. How do we get that person in the gym and they real and to realize that we're all we're all on the same playing field here. Mm-hmm. And you step foot in the gym, you're, you're fighting the same fight we are. Right. And and that's that's going to be one of our big pushes. I love that, and I can relate to that so much because now being I'm in residency, seeing patients, you see this is like a cross section of the world. You know, we are so surrounded in our affiliates of people who are motivated, who want to work out, who want to be healthy. But if you look at the general population, there's so many people who have that negative self-talk, feel like they're always failing, Mm -hmm. you know, are so afraid to even start. And it's like, how do you talk to those people? How do you, you know, show them or put them in the right environment so that they can gain some confidence and feel like they're capable of doing it? Yeah. And, 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 and I think it's, it's, it's funny because certainly in the world of CrossFit, what we consider out of shape mm-hmm. is really very, fit. Really fit. <laughs> you know, it's like, and you know, I was talking about this. You know, someone's like, "Oh, it's been, I haven't worked out in you know two months." I'm like, "Yeah, but you're still fitter than most all Americans." Yeah, you really are. I mean, yeah. that's not a good thing, but it is what it is. And you know, how do we get those people into the gym that are you know that can't you know it's like the average female in the United States of America. America can't do one push up. It's crazy. Yeah. The average male can't do more than 14 sit ups in one minute. Wow. You know, like you hear those numbers and that, that's staggering, right? Oh, and, and it's not surprising to see like once these people age into their 70s, 80s, why are they falling and breaking a hip? Why are they right. needing help in the nursing home? And that's and that's where I look at it's a and this is why where, where in my opinion corporate responsibility for preventative health care mm-hmm. is the future. And as much as we talk about is corporate responsibility and philanthropy and social purpose, and I get that, but I think that we are missing as a society and a culture of preventative health care. Mm-hmm. Before we worry about anything else, we need to worry about ourselves. And what I mean by that is the health of our, of, of our people mm-hmm. because nothing else matters if, if, our, if we're dying. Right. And health you know, healthcare cost is going up, and, and what is driving up the health cost of health care is preventable diseases, mm-hmm. chronic diseases that are preventable, essentially from, you know, poor diet and poor and lack of exercise. Mm-hmm. And I do believe it's a co- you know, these corporations at the top have a responsibility. And I, and I truly believe that, you know, what Reebok is doing is the, is this, it's the example because of how many people are doing it. Mm-hmm. If I, if we get 95 to a hundred percent of the employee base working out mm-hmm. consistently, it's unheard of. That's unheard of. Yeah. And that's that's what every company needs to strive for mm-hmm. as opposed to giving, you know, like free pizza Wednesdays. Right. Yeah. And like you said, it's that culture and it's the environment that people are in. If you're in an environment where it's, you know, it gains momentum with 75% of your coworkers are working out, you're more likely to work out. If there's not, if there's not you know, cookies and like soda all around your yeah. office, then you're not going to drink it. But yeah. It's, and that's another one where it's like what I think there's one hospital that just broke the headlines that they got rid of all soda within mm-hmm. the hospital. And, you know, I don't know where it was, but I mean, it, that's recent. Yeah, I think they just recently, Australia just recently made a big push for getting all sugar and soda out of their hospitals and yeah. making the the culture more health conscious. Our, I mean, where I work at the Cleveland Clinic years ago, they the CEO got rid of all so we sell diet soda, but mm-hmm. he got rid of all yeah. sugar sweetened beverages and it, people were in uproar about it and people still bring in their own right. soda, but, um, at least it's a step in the right direction. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, when we, we, we got rid of soda in, in, in Canton yeah. and, um, from all that stuff. And it was funny because people like lost their mind. We never said they couldn't bring it on their own, you know, and. I think that's an, it's, it's funny because one, people just don't like being told what to do. More right. importantly, what not to do. Right. You know, cause like, well, it's my body. Like, you know, but my issue with that is, you know, cause when people complain about that, but I can do whatever I want, mm-hmm. but who pays for it? Right. You know, like, and I, I take that, like, it's like, who is paying for the obesity, the mm-hmm. diabetes, you know, all the, all of these things that are happening, mm-hmm. you know, it's where, and I just look around at my friends, you know, our friends. We don't go to the doctor, mm-hmm. you know, like 
for any of that. We go to the, you know, it's like we do normal things, but it's like my dad's 63 years old Mm -hmm. and, you know, he can do handstand push-ups, walk on his hands, do pull-ups, clean, all that good stuff. It's, I mean, I look at him and he's, you know, doesn't even, I forget that he's even like people like 60. I'm like, yeah. He looks like he's 40, you know, yeah. I think he's just, you know, yeah. your dad's your dad, you know, it's an age, it's, it's <laughs> sure. just a, but like, <laughs> it just, it's, there is a responsibility piece where, yeah, you can do whatever you want to your body, mm-hmm. but there is a repercussion to that. It's, it's like, yeah, you can do whatever you want in your house, but you know, if you leave, you know, a match next to your, you know, your stove and your house lights on fire and it burns someone else's house down next to you. Yeah that's a problem mm-hmm. and that's your problem mm-hmm. that you now made everyone else's. So it's not just, Hey, let me do what I want in my own house, my own body. It's dramatically affecting your neighbors. It's so true. Yeah. It's so true. It's a big culture change. I think, um, one of the other unique things, and it's like you said, it's not just for Reebok obviously is very, uh, it's a fitness brand, right. but the same things apply at any other company, no matter what their business is. I think that, yeah. The impact that it has on the employees, their health, and then the culture, like you were talking about, I think is potentially huge. But I think one of the unique things, and we were talking about this today at the summit, uh, is how much Reebok has ingrained CrossFit into their culture, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, back then, you know, Reebok was the first kind of company to enter into CrossFit yeah. and have this partnership. And now there's so many more companies coming in and entering this space, but how important that culture is right. and how, how much of an impact that makes on what Reebok does in the clothes they design and the shoes they design, everything else. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I think, and we were chatting about it, like you said earlier today, and it's a story that I think some people are aware of, but I think it's easy to take for granted that, mm-hmm. you know, they do CrossFit, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, and a good example is when I first got to campus, I was in every meeting about apparel and footwear because mm-hmm. they didn't know they're like yeah. what do you need yeah you know and, and you're like what, what you know what, what does it feel like when you do this and that and we would have the conversations it was great but then you know as as years went on i would be in less and less of those meetings because everyone that it was in those meetings have been do, has been doing crossfit for now mm-hmm. one two three years no they know yeah. and so they know and and, and it was being all crossfit's the same it's universally applicable and scalable for mm-hmm. everyone so a rope climbs a rope climb doesn't matter how fast you do them. Mm-hmm. You know, power clean to power clean. You know, a snatch is a snatch and running is running. Yeah. And I think that's something that's not many brands can say that and even have the ability to say it. Sure. Or for any other sports, like most people are not playing professional football or professional exactly. basketball. Like it's different. Um, but the fact that cross, like anyone can do CrossFit and you immediately know what it's like. Right. It's just a factor of how you're scaling the workout or the you know, how you're doing it. Right. And I think that's something that I think the, the world, the consumer really should take into consideration mm-hmm. of like these people, you know, it's as much as, the, you know, it's authentic, mm-hmm. you know, as much as that word kind of is kind of weird yeah. is like when you're saying it's usually inauthentic, but it's true. <laughs> and they do it, you know, yeah. like they're, they're doing what they say mm-hmm. and what they're selling, what they create. And that's something that, like you said, not every brand can do for the products they make. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they take it seriously is that they live that brand, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's not, yeah, it's obviously like people are like, yeah, oh, of course they want to make money. Like when people are like, oh, they're just out to make money. Well, like, yeah, it's, it's a business. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had a business? Uh, you, it's mm-hmm. part of the deal. You know, like, I don't <laughs> want people would say like, oh, they just want to make money. I'm like, what do you do? Like, do you not like, does that not, not a factor in your life? Right. You know, like if not cool, like good, good on for you. you but, yeah. So of course they want to sell product, but they want to make good product, you know, and, and, you know, I think, uh, and with that people, you know, oftentimes I'll hear like all the complaints about the price, like, oh, it's expensive. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, you have a Yeti, you know, like a <laughs> you know, mug in your hand. It was $50 for really? a coffee mug, you know, oh like, my oh yeah. I mean, it's like, oh yeah, but it's nice. Exactly. You it's, think it's nice. And right. for whatever reason that is, you paid a premium for it, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, yeah, and they probably, you know, drink out of their, you know, you know, coolers and all that yeah. sort of stuff. And no different in the world, you know, from Reebok, from the footwear and apparel perspective. And I think that matters more, you know, and um, I think that's the story that, you know, people should be more aware of. And I think Reebok is going to start to do it as a brand more. Mm-hmm. But it's also kind of like, I also see the other side of it where like, you know, it's sometimes I'm like, well, do people actually care? Like what the designer's doing in at their lunch break, you right. know, like. 
I always like wonder, it's like, you know, like uh, is it like too much like, oh, look at us, we're mm-hmm. doing what we, you know, what we sell and say. So I get the balance and because sure. you never want to be like all about me. You want to be give it sure. to more about them and, you know, the others. So totally. But I think it is important and it's, it makes you appreciate, like you said, the authenticity of it and knowing how much thought and how much kind of expertise goes into right. every single item. So I think there's a lot to be said about that. Oh, yeah. So shifting gears a little bit, mm-hmm. what? Tell me about Austin Maliolo pre CrossFit. Oh gosh, what were you like? <laughs> so Austin Maliolo pre CrossFit, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's. I don't want to bore or take. You know, guys, <laughs> I don't know how much like you know, how much time do we have, right? But so essentially, you know, I prior to Cro- like most people that know me know me from the CrossFit world. Yeah, and it's and it's funny because my, it's my that's my life now. Mm-hmm. So when I talk about my life story, you know, prior to most people are like, no, like that doesn't, that, that's not, it's not possible, it's not possible <laughs> that I was a, a delinquent degenerate that was <laughs> in a lot of trouble, as much trouble as you can imagine, getting shipped all around the, you know, you know, the country to different, you know, programs to try to get straightened out. But mm-hmm. I mean, that's essentially was it. Now it wasn't like all oh, just doom and gloom. I wasn't, you know, just, uh, you know, there's this dark cloud of my entire life. But uh, I mean, essentially growing up, you know, lived a normal childhood, whatever the yeah. heck that means, right? Sure. Normal. And uh, just got into a, like a lot of trouble in, a, in like the mid-teens of my life. And, okay. You know, if if I were to say what was I like, I was like a, just any sort of punk kid that's trying to fit in with older kids and making poor decisions based off how other people perceived me. Mm. So right? trying to be like cool. Yeah, the cool or, kid, yeah. you know, so like, you know, and, and then, and then, you know, you always want to hang out with the older kids. They're, they're, they're drinking, they're doing drugs, they're hanging mm-hmm. out, they're doing that stuff. Like, well, that's what you're going to do, mm-hmm. you know? And my, one thing that has never really changed is my extreme personality, personality. right? It's like, there's always <laughs> you're like, you're all in. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all in, <laughs> which is a problem when you're all in the on, wrong thing. on the wrong things. Right. <laughs> and it, it's, you know, life is so true that, you know, you have, you your character attributes are your character yeah. attributes. And I was channeling those for like, you know, not good. It's mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, and, and so long story short is, you know, I got arrested. I got sent down, I sent, got sent to an outdoor education, an outdoor program called second nature in Utah for two months. Okay. Then from there I went down to a therapeutic boarding school. I was, um, in Virginia for two years. Okay. Then I went, to, then Wait, I, how old, how, what age was that? So that was, I left there and I was like 18. So I was okay. down there uh, until I was 18. Then I went to college, you know, back on the straight and narrow and then got kicked out of college. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, of course, like, you know, things are good. And then, you you know, again, wrong people, wrong decisions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was funny because when you, when you look back at, at the pre CrossFit, it's, it's, it's amazing on actually how CrossFit entered into my life where mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm kicked out of school. I was, it was my, it was my senior year. It was my junior year mm-hmm. of, of college in the first semester. So I go home, mm-hmm. probably the lowest moment of my whole life where, you know, of course it was like during like end of October, you can remember where like the holidays are coming up and mm-hmm. you have to tell everyone, you are like, Oh, how's school? Good. I got kicked out. Good, you know, I'm like, not going back. Yeah. You know, it's awful. And you know, and, and this is your junior year. So you only had one year left after yeah, that. Yeah. You know, and, and I was going to school for exercise science. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of like labs and projects, it, you know, didn't make things easy. Right. Mm-hmm. And so what, then what I ended up, you know, when I went home and, I had a massive, I guess you could say, enlightening moment in mm-hmm. my life. And it was essentially the, the the concept of everything is your responsibility, mm-hmm. your decisions, your friendships, mm-hmm. who you surround yourself with, your actions, your words, your reactions, everything. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. And I got, and I was with them. And so that's, that's why I got kicked out of school. I didn't, I, I didn't do anything. I was just around something that went down mm-hmm. and they're like, well, you were there. So you're gone. You're gone. Wow. And at first I was, I was, I was like upset because I was, I, I didn't do that. I didn't do yeah. anything, but and it was, and I realized how easy it was to blame others for any scenario or for anything that happened to you. Mm-hmm. So easy. Mm-hmm. And, and at that moment I was like, well, it's my fault. Hmm. It's my, I, I'm in this situation. No one else is. Yeah. And what do you think made that light go off for you? You know, I think 
when you know you go through I, you know, go through everything I went through prior to that, mm-hmm. and and for me it was like honestly a lot with my with my father who always stuck by me like mm-hmm. he was one that was always fighting for me that sent me like, I could have gone to jail when I was you know sixteen mm-hmm. he's like no you're gonna go out to this you know second nature and you're gonna go to this go to that and. Mm-hmm. And then go. I got into school, and then I get, and I get kicked out of school, and I, you know, it, it was a, just a moment where I was like, you know, I had to take responsibility, and I, and it was, I was, I was, you were so low mm-hmm. that two things happened. You decide to quit, mm-hmm. and you know, unfortunately, like you know, there's a lot of kids I went to school with in Virginia that are no longer with us today because they got that loan, they quit. quit. Wow. You know, and. Unfortunately, we probably all know someone in our life or have heard of someone in our life where that, that happens. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens. You get so low because the other side of that is really hard mm-hmm. where you have to look at yourself and admit that it's your fault mm-hmm. and you need to take ownership of that. And that's not fun. Mm-mm. And you have to apologize. You need to take ownership for your, your everything in your life is your fault. There's, it's no one else's fault. And in, in doing that, then you got to do something. Mm -hmm. So not only do you have to have this understanding of this ownership, but then you actually need to act, right? That's the, that's That's the other piece. You got to do something. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm going to do something here. So I went to community college at night to keep my health insurance. Cause when you're in school, you got to be a full-time student Mm -hmm. to keep your health insurance. And at least at the time I was working construction during the day, Mm -hmm. going to school at night. And I, I had a personal trainer license and I was applying to jobs and I ended up getting, you know, a personal trainer job at, at, at a gym 40 minutes away. And mm-hmm. of course the only shift they needed you from like, was like 4 a.m. to like, you know, eight, the shift that no one wanted. So I was like, <laughs> well, I'll take it. Going to school at night, training, you know, personal training at this gym. And then I was working construction still. And it was my first gig I ever mm-hmm. had, like, you know, job, you know, really. And, you know, personal training, no idea what I was doing. Yeah. But I was certified, you know, like you doing know. what you're, you know, what you wanted to do. Yeah, what, what degree I, was. Yeah, what I was, you know, you know, studying for, yeah. and and that's actually where I found CrossFit was in that gym. Okay. One of the senior trainers was like, "You got to try this CrossFit thing out," and I was like, "What's CrossFit?" And he's like, yeah. "You know, they have this workout called Fran." I was like, "What is that?" You know, it's like you know, it's this movement. It's like a thruster and then a pull up and. I did it, you know, I was like, sure, I'll do it. It's like 95 pounds, that's light. I was a meathead because <laughs> you know, I was a classic, you know, like, you know. Were just, you like all upper body and like you no know, legs? Oh yeah, I mean, I was actually like, I would deadlift and squat. Like I was, okay. f- for some reason when I was training through college, mm-hmm. I was a, a, a pure meathead. Okay. And I would like deadlift and front squat and things like that where, you know, most people didn't. So mm-hmm. I like, I had no idea what I was doing and I probably moved awfully. I know I did, <laughs> but I had some capacity, mm-hmm. relatively speaking. And I did Fran, and I think I did in like five minutes. I'm sure none of the wow. reps counted, yeah. you know. But I mean, I and I th- <laughs> and I threw up into a garbage can, at, you know. Like I, and I was like, and it was just like in the moment of where I was in my training and my life. I was like, it. It was like I love this. Yeah. You know, and and this was when what year? Was this it? was 2009. Okay. And and then of course the all in, you know, yep. Maliola was like, well, then literally that night, I re- I, I I printed every CrossFit Journal article. <laughs> that they had at the time and you could do that at the time you can't do that now, now. It'd be a little hard i printed them all i was like oh this they have a, like a level one course i was like oh shit it's a thousand bucks i had like i had a one credit card with a 500 hundred dollar limit yeah so i uh, i was like well i gotta get another credit card <laughs> so i got another credit card with 500 hundred dollar limit so then i was like all right five hundred dollars down got i got my other credit card uh-huh. i was able to pay for the other one i was like what's this I was like, what's a clean and jerk and a snatch? <laughs> I could, they had all, oh, they have an Olympic lifting seminar. Man, that's another like 500 bucks. <laughs> all right. I'll pay off that credit card. And I paid for my Olympic lifting seminar. Wow. I bought Every Second Counts, which was the movie. The movie. They were selling like old programs from the old games. I was okay. like, I'll buy those because they had all the athletes, um, mm-hmm. their stats. Mm-hmm. So, so what I did, again, crazy me, I went through and, and highlighted the best no way Times i did the same of every athlete thing. so then i so then i had like so i just knew i was like well if there was the best of everyone yep. this would be it i was like i have to beat that yes i did the same thing the 2009 they had them all posted online it was like the average time for each benchmark yeah. and then the best time yeah and i posted it up on my wall yeah. i started the same 2009 june 
posted up on my wall and I was like, there's no way I'm going to get these numbers. But like slowly as the year went by, you'd mm-hmm. start ticking them off. Yeah. That's hilarious. That's, yeah. So I did that. And and then somehow like in, in less than a year's training, I went to, you know, I went to the games in 2010. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, so then I went, I, I actually went back to college mm-hmm. to finish my, cause you had to go, I had to go back to the school I went to okay. to finish my degree of exercise science. But I lived in Syracuse. Okay. Um, part of that was like all right well i'm not going to go anywhere i'm going to keep myself out of any equation that's not what i want to be mm-hmm. in went to school twice a week you know full schedule on tuesday thursday okay and i um, started coaching at a crossfit gym and personal training as well wow. on the other days and training for the games that's amazing so and then and then sort of that's kind of where we kind of picked, picked up. up wow but uh that's that was sort of the life before crossfit mm-hmm. and so it's it very different you know yeah. where so when people kind of look at me now, like, oh, like, you know, I, I partied eight nights a week in college and I, <laughs> I did, I did, I did anything and everything that you don't want to imagine. And, you know, I think for me, uh, you know, one of my, one of my big sort of pushes are to, you know, how do I reach people, uh, people and kids and like, mm-hmm. like, like that was me. And I'm actually in the process of writing a book with a writer and mm-hmm. that that's the whole thing of how do we, how do we you know, relay that message. Yeah. And also to parents too. Like, cause I, like, I wouldn't have made it without my dad. Mm-hmm. I, I truly believe everyone needs someone in their life that believes in them more than you believe in yourself mm-hmm. at some point. Because again, you know, someone that doesn't have that person in their life mm-hmm. and it's sad. Yeah. You know, and cause I, I couldn't, I can't imagine like the, the level of just unconditional love that you have to have for someone when they're continually like doing everything in their power yeah. to push you away. It's just crazy. And that was me, you know, and I look at my dad every time I call my dad every day, like we're, we're mm-hmm. best friends and I'll just call him up. I'm like, you're it's a, like, I'm like, how do you do it? Like still, you know, like <laughs> it's just crazy. And, and it's uh, so that's one of my big, you know, passions is sort of, it's okay to fail, mm-hmm. you know? And I think that you see a lot of, of people kind of go through their life and they're just kind of mediocre too. Mm-hmm. And they never really take a risk. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you need to go to jail. I don't think you need Mm -hmm. to be a complete idiot, but like you got to take a risk and, and, you know, you're going to fail, you know, and I think people had the cliche of failure makes you better. No, it doesn't like crashing your car doesn't make you a better driver. (laughs) It's not going to make you better, Mm -hmm. but it's inevitable. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn in the journey to, and the journey from, and it's, that's how we grow, you know? And I think that's, so many people are afraid of that, Absolutely. you know, and I think that's, so that's a big sort of, and that, and that's for me, it was just a lot of failure mm-hmm. and everyone's different, you know, like for, I'm a, I'm an idiot. I'm a, th- I'm thick headed. So it took me a lot of, <laughs> you know, moments in order to have that moment of, of, of clarity of like, all right, this is my fault sure. and, and take that responsibility. What would you say to someone who is in that position where like to help them get to that moment or someone who's in that like rock bottom position that just doesn't know if they can, you know, make the right choice. You know, I think, I think about that question a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and I think about where I was, you know, and, and you have to be so raw mm-hmm. that you're able to hear things. And there's so, there's, you know, cause every moment before that I knew, like I had it figured out, you know, mm-hmm. and you have to be in that moment where there really is, you can't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And in that moment, you have to realize that you need to take ownership and you need to act. You need to do something. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what you do. Just do something and start walking in the right direction Mm -hmm. and expect nothing. You know, I think that's so important where no, no one owes you anything Mm -hmm. and no one's watching you. No one cares about you. Just do something and do it because that's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, and that's like, because that's all it is for me. It was, all right, you know what? I'm going to work, go back to work, work construction. I'm going to, I'm going to go to school at night because I got to keep my health. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I was alone a lot in that that year. I mean, I I was, I was with my girlfriend, my now wife at the time. She was finishing up school. Mm -hmm. Right. And I was living at home and, you know, it's, you have to be with yourself and you need to be okay. I think the biggest thing I see and what I saw for myself is that 
people and myself make so many decisions based off others. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think college is a good example of that. And everyone, oh, yeah. everyone can remember like, yeah, your group of friends. Yeah. How many times did you do something that you did not want to do, but all your friends were doing it and you didn't want to be the like, Oh, like I got to go do this. Mm -hmm. But then at some point I, I, you made that decision. If, if you're, you know, so whoever is successful in life makes the decision to, to be selfish mm -hmm. and, and to do whatever you want to do in that moment. And I think, you need to have that, that sort of, a, that peace with yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember just driving to community college. I would just listen to like the, like, uh, like the Yankees on the radio or something like mm -hmm. that. And, and I just, I'll never forget. Like it was, and I would just be eating in my car, you know, yeah. wait, you know, and, and no one else was there. And like, and it wasn't like, I think a lot of people expect like, Oh, like accolades for going to school and, yeah. you know, like doing that, like, was working construction, plowing at night, shoveling in the winter. Like, yep, that's what, it's just, I, it's just yeah. doing what I do. Daily grind. And I think that's, I think that's, and that's what I, like, I try to impress upon that person is that this is your time just to, you need to take responsibility and, and do this. And no one mm -hmm. is going to be there for you. No one's going to hold your hand mm -hmm. because you need to act because you, it's, you're here because of you. Mm -hmm. And there's only one person to get you out of there. Yeah. And finding the clarity as life goes on to look back and and because in the moment you'll never realize who is that person your rock you just won't mm -hmm. like everyone's like oh you need to learn to respect this like it's never going to happen because you're blinded by your ignorance and as you you know for me it's you know i always say that my biggest fear of you know being a dad mm -hmm. is to be half as good as a father as my dad was to me mm -hmm. and and I think that you don't realize that when you're a kid, you don't no. realize what they're doing, you know, and I think that, and I think that comes and you find that person out and you, and you, and you keep them close, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be your, it can be anyone in your life, you mm -hmm. know, that, that mentor, that, that person that, you, that believed in you, you know, and I think that's, um, and that's another hard one. Cause you got to like es essentially admit that you were a piece of garbage to them for a long time. Oh yeah. And that's not fun to like tell someone, be like, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, so true. It's it's so interesting too because I think what you say it applies. I mean, it applies in so many different ways. But like we were talking about earlier, with lifestyle decision, uh, lifestyle decisions, yeah. and having those sometimes saying like, okay, everyone else in the office is drinking soda, but I'm going to take responsibility for my own decisions, and I'm going to pack my own lunch, or I'm going to go work out during my yeah. lunch break. Which so many times people just keep making these bad decisions because it's easy because it's what everyone else is doing. Right. Even though they don't want to. Right. You know, and I think I, I, that's something I, I, I struggle with is that empathy sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, again, I think I've swung to this point where like, because everyone's like, oh, like, it's like, how do you like, like eating well or like, 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 I'm like, for me, it's not hard anymore. I'm like, mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't drink, you know, and like, it's just normal. And it's just so, and people are like, oh, like, oh, like, what is it hard when you go out and your friends are drinking? I'm like, no. Cause I, they're like, say, do you want to drink? I'm like, no. That's and, the decision's already made. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. And, and it's funny because I, when I tell people that I say it with such sort of authority and it's not like authority, but just like, that's, that's what it's like. Okay. Yeah. You know, and where I do understand and and respect the difficulty it is for people to be in that environment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I think that's the gap that we need to bridge for, for those that are struggling with that. Mm -hmm. It's a social thing. Totally. You know, and I know if there's like an area of improvement for me, it's that it's understanding that. Cause I, I don't have that anymore. Mm -hmm. Certainly from a nutritional perspective, from a discipline, from a health, a health, a self health care perspective. Mm -hmm. For me, it's like, it's easy. Yeah. And for most, it's not. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that the relatability for people is really important. And and I do think that's where, like, you know, certainly whether it's at your gym, whether it's in the hospital, like having different people that have had different struggles is so important. Mm -hmm. Because there are people that I don't think I will ever connect with, that you may never connect with based mm -hmm. off who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah, You just need to surround yourself with people that have different backgrounds, different experiences that can touch different people, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think that's something that I've learned. I, I was, I think I was in the beginning of my coaching career, you go through this time, you have this bravado and right. you, you, you want to help everyone and you're yeah. like, I can do it. I have the answers, you yeah. know, like, 
variance, functionality, intensity, meats and vegetables, mm-hmm. nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, <laughs> no sugar. Like you, it's like, I got it's it. It's easy. <laughs> and then you realize that none of that really matters if you can't communicate it. So true. And if that person doesn't want to receive it, mm-hmm. you know, and that's for me where like now in, in, in having a couple of gyms and a big staff, it's, I'm nothing without the team around me, mm-hmm. you know, and and they are more important than anything else because they're the ones that have that, that mathematical ability to reach more people. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that's something that as we grow, it's, we realize that it's not about you. It's about the, everyone around you, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's something that I think we all see with people that are in positions of influence, realize that it's not about them. It's about the other people around them that so true. can influence more people. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I love the level do ones anything by yourself. and the yeah. level twos. Cause you, know, you see 50 people come to a level one mm-hmm. and you realize that you can make a positive impact on 50 people and those 50 people, people can affect f- five people mm-hmm. a piece. And that's a, that's a huge, impact. a huge impact. And that's why, you know, I, that's why CrossFit works. That's why it grows mm-hmm. it's because it's a positive impact and it's a pretty simple math uh, expression. <laughs> that's so true. So what is your day to day like now? Do you have a can you give us like a typical day in the life of Austin? Oh yeah. So the day in the life of Austin, it's, um, it's since kind of changed a little bit since we moved to the seaport, but I think I'm settling into our new routine. Okay. Um, it's pretty early. Most days I wake up pretty early around like four 30, um, is the traditional day. So four 30, um, you know, I always say that, you know, the day starts the night before I'm the nerd that puts out my outfit the night before my bag is packed. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that happens the night before. Um, so I get up and, you know, get ready and I, I'm a fan of coffee. So I, I, you know, every morning it's either, you know, certainly if it's, if I'm going real early like that, I'll just do like a single cup pour over. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoy the process. I recently got, uh, one of those Alexas, oh, um, for nice. Am- and I like it cause I just, I'll say like good morning and it tells me like all the news and stuff like that. Oh, wow. I actually really like it cause I can be somewhat educated on current events mm-hmm. where I was just, I was not able to keep up so mm-hmm. i'll like listen to that while i make my coffee uh have a little uh breakfast and then i'll hit the road i'll get to the gym usually by like 5 45 mm-hmm. and a little bit of a drive i always i do audiobooks on the way in okay. so um I'll any li- good ones you've listened to lately so i just finished um i think it was called naked money hmm. it's uh just about essentially about currency and money hmm. I, I i try to go through um like different topics. Okay. So I do, I'll do like a business book, which mm-hmm. I just finished up with. Um, and then I'll do like a leadership or mm-hmm. a mentoring type of book. I'll try to do some sort of fitness mm-hmm. health type of book. Um, and then I'll try to do a challenge. I call it like a challenger. Um, and I think the last one I did was the language of God. Yes. Oh, I love that book. Yeah. It's one of my all time favorite books. And I, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm not religious mm-hmm. at all. Um, and, so I read that and it was, it was, that was a lot. It was a lot to take it's in. Lot, yeah. So I try to kind of mix it up. That's so cool. So you pick a book that isn't something that you necessarily w- would want to read, but you right. kind of force yourself to branch out into a new. Right. That's really cool. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's interesting, you know, and, and, and who would have thought like, you know, it makes you think, yeah. you know, and I think, um, you know, we tell people to challenge themselves all the time in the world of fitness. Yeah. So I try to do it intellectually, but I don't know if it works, but, That's um, awesome. Yeah. So I, the, the, the currency one was, that was, it was good. I mean, it was a lot. Mm-hmm. It was like one of those where like, I just kept like going like the, like go, go back 15 go back, seconds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, you know, and I have, I don't think I retain as much as re- you know, reading, but sure. I don't have time to read. So more and, than you would. Yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I figure if I can get, at least get some, you know, content in there, it's mm-hmm. fun. Makes the drives a little more bearable. Totally. Um, so I get into the gym and then I normally do about like an, get there about 5:45, and then we um, we have a 6:45 a.m. class. So at the gym, I usually work until then. Mm-hmm. That first hour of the day is my most productive. Mm-hmm. So have some coffee. I um, I'm, you know, just getting ahead on the day, mm-hmm. answering emails, and then I'll usually jump into the first class of the day. Okay. I love it. if I'm not coaching it, I'll jump in. Mm-hmm. I'll take the class with the peeps. Um, it's my favorite. I love taking yeah. class. I take every cl- class every day. Mm-hmm. And then from there, I, I, if, if I'm, if I'm feeling good, I, I get most of my training done there. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm warmed up. I'm feeling yep, good, get a workout. So I usually just try to hit most, you know, th- if not three quarters of my session in the morning Okay. and I'm done by eight thirty. And now are you still training with your team? Do you have specific programming that you're doing or? Yeah. So, I mean the, now 
that will you know change I mean, a little bit yeah, as the season's just the season just so. starting now. So we'll have to as a team start training a mm-hmm. little more. Um, but we all follow um, the hand plan programming with okay. Spencer and I program. So the affiliate follows it, and then you know, the whole team follows it. So the main workout of the day we all do no matter what. Mm-hmm. So we all we know we always kind of track on that sort of mm-hmm. stuff together. As through, through the open, we don't really have to train together as mm-hmm. much. It's really like after the open, before yep. regionals, when we start really cranking on the team workouts. Totally. But that that does lengthen the days out. Absolutely, it's a lot to coordinate. Yeah, it's that's the hardest part of the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be a little easier this year with four, four instead yeah. of six, but still, the yeah. schedules. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know how it <laughs> it's is. Tough. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, and then from there, really, just like it's a whirlwind of a day. You know, I'm usually cranking, you know, with um, whether meetings or mm-hmm. work in the morning, then pretty much come 11 o'clock, 11, 12, 1, 2, we have a lot of classes. Mm-hmm. That's when a majority of our CrossFit classes are. Gym's really busy. Okay. We'll have, you know, probably 200, 300 people within that, you know, three wow. hour window. Which is more than most gyms have in their total membership. Yeah. It's so, I mean, and then everything happens in that time. You yeah. Know? So you're running around and then. And then from there, like we have a little bit of a lull, mm-hmm. um, and that's usually where I like sit down, you know, catch, you know, catch up catch on the your, emails yeah. from, you know, just being on your feet for the whole midday. If I have to hit another session, I'll usually do it right around like four. Mm-hmm. Um, and then depends on the day. Some, if I'm there super early, I try to get out of there by like four, mm-hmm. um, which is hard sometimes, you know, sure. sometimes that There's doesn't happen. There's always something going on. Yeah. And then, you know, get home. And then, you know, and now that our, the commute's much longer, it's, I'm home a lot less. Mm-hmm. So I try to like be a little more present. That's, mm-hmm. that's sort of my goal, which is not easy to do, Yeah. but come home and I, I got my little dog, Ben, and, yeah. you know, I spend time with my wife, Marin, just, you know, hanging out just a little bit. And then I usually kind of get, you know, crack open the computer again, you mm-hmm. know, you know, after I kind of settle down for an hour or so, and then just kind of work a little bit and just hang out mm-hmm. with Marin, watch some sort of you know, TV or movie or something while yeah. I'm working and, you know, you know, it's, and I try to eat within there. I usually forget, you know, food is, it's funny. I was talking to someone and I was talking to Rich about it today. Like we, I forget to eat all the time. Yeah. I feel like for some reason you guys are so much, you can go so much longer without eating. Like I would, we, I agree. We like, talked about this before, but we like, once we start getting hungry, the girls are always like going to be eating some sort of meal during the day. I've noticed that too. Like our women eat more than the men i think we do i mean yeah. like i i mean there are times where i'll go like 10 hours without eating i'm like oh I forgot to eat i know my husband does the same thing yeah i'm like eh, don't i don't get it and, and i th- you know i don't i don't know what it, i mean i am a believer in a caloric deficit i'm i'm actually not as sold on the importance of like macro timing i, I just from what i see like from from what i when i hang out with other athletes that are really good you know, and mm-hmm. obviously it's important, but I don't think it's, I think that a caloric deficit, if you're in it, it's a, it's a pretty good place to be. Mm-hmm. You can, it, I think it's hard to get there. Mm-hmm. I really do. I think it's painful to get to. Yeah. Um, but if you're really busy, yeah. <laughs> it's not, you know, like, and, and for, you know, high end athletes, they're working out all the time. Right. You don't want to eat when you're working out. I mean, think about competition is a good example. Yeah. It's hard you, to get an actual meal in. Right. You know, so I, that's kind of what my days kind of turn into just mm-hmm. with all the other stuff. So, totally. um, but my wife says I look skinny sometimes, so it stresses me out. So then I start eating. <laughs> yeah. She'll give me like a gluten-free bagel with butter on. I'm like, are you trying to tell me something here? <laughs> there were like two of them. I'm like, my gosh, That's I can't funny. eat all of this. But That's funny. I've told my husband that once or twice and he does not take it well. He just starts eating everything. It just stresses me out. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a good way to <laughs> get, you know, men to eat is call them skinny. It's true. Yeah. It's very true. But yeah, it's a, that's a normal day. It's um, and then you know, and that's during the week. And I I, I work almost every weekend for the uh, mm-hmm. seminars still. So come Friday, hop on a plane or somewhere and work and yeah. fly back and you know, keeps us busy. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I think I don't know what the saying is that James always says about you, James Hobart. But he always <laughs> says something about like if you if Austin ever stops moving, he'll die or something. Well, yeah, that's for along certain. those lines. But why, what motivates you to be so, I mean, you could easily even take out one of those things, like yeah. not, you know, just training, but not necessarily competing right. or, you know, running the affiliate, but not coaching as much or not doing the seminars. But why are all those things so important to you to be keeping up that pace? You know, it's, I think, I think part of it, it's just like, it's who I am. Mm-hmm. And I think a big piece of, 
for outside looking in, it's easy to look at all of those things mm-hmm. from, you know, running Reebok and you know having a handful of other gyms in, in the Boston area and, mm-hmm. you know, seminar staff and hand plan programming and, and things like that. But it's it's been gradual, you know, and I didn't just start working 40 weekends a year. Right. You know, I do that now. But when I started, it was like, you know, once in a while and mm-hmm. just slowly built up. Mm-hmm. And I really do love it. And I love what I do. It's, it's, I have a hobby dubbed a job. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, I'm in the Bahamas right now as part of work, essentially, right? <laughs> it's I mean, pretty amazing. You know, so it's, there's a lot of value to that. And, and, and I, I also understand that at some point I'm probably going to have to slow down mm-hmm. when we ha- when I have a family, when we mm-hmm. have kids, you know, I'm going to want to be around them. And, you know, what motivates me is like, you know, it's, you know, I'm, I'm the, I'm the caretaker, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I want to be able to, to, to do everything and anything I can. Cause one, I love it, mm-hmm. but two, I understand that if I love it now, it's good, but you know, life will change and different sacrifices will have to happen. Mm-hmm. So I should do that stuff now. Now while well, you can. And, you know, and, and again, that whole responsibility piece, it's, it's, I, I always feel like, ah, I can do it. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, it's. I love, you know, like competing. Like I, 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 you know, that's probably more of an ignorant thing where like, I don't know what not, I don't know how not to train to compete. It's, it's a really good point. I was talking to someone about this today that it wasn't until I stopped competing that I even realized like how much stress or pressure or like just how much it influences your day because it's constantly in the back of your mind. Right. I didn't think that it was because it was just normal. That's what you do right. year after year. Um, and so you just, it's just normal. You don't think about, you know, how much stress that puts on you. Oh yeah. And that's where like, I mean, I, I, I found CrossFit and I was competing in another year. Mm -hmm. I don't don't know any of anything else. Yeah. You know, so that's probably, that's just like, that is part of who I am. And, you know, I think that there's with, with any, you know, with, with any positive is always a negative, right? I just part of my identity, our identity as athletes. It's like, well, when you stop competing, what happens? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, there's, I mean, I don't care what anyone says. That's a huge, that's a, a huge, huge part piece. of you. Yeah. Um, you know, and then also it's like that, that ego piece of like, sure. you know, I'm still viable. I can mm-hmm. still do this damn thing. You can still keep up with everyone. Right. Yeah. You know, and then also it just, it's fun, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, and I love to, I love working out. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know some competitors that don't like working out. Mm-hmm. I like to work out, Yeah. you know? So I think that's another thing where I really enjoy it. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know. I'll, I'll train with my buddies and they're like, what do you want to do? I'm like, oh, let's work out. They're like, no, I don't want to work out. Like, <laughs> I want to work out. It's what I want to do. So I think that's part of the thing. And you know what? And with CrossFit, it's, gosh, it's just so fun to coach. I love the business aspect of CrossFit now that with three different gyms in the mm-hmm. area and, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and part of it is I, I, like this responsibility piece where like, I think that there's a lot of opportunity to help other people. Mm-hmm. People change their lives. They start their businesses. They they change career paths for this sort of stuff. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity to help others mm-hmm. and to set the example. And 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 I think that I think you need to lead from the front. You gotta you know, if I want to give people advice about coaching or running a gym or working out, then I need to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I could never take advice from someone to run an affiliate that if they if they don't have a gym. Yeah. You know, because people do that. They're out there. They're like, oh, That's like true. I'm an affiliate consultant. But you yeah. don't run your affiliate. That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. You know, so like for me, it's like I feel like you got to lead from the front from a lot of those perspectives. Level one, Absolutely. a level two. Taking your own classes at your gym. Huh? That's right. You Like it's, I think it's really simple things. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's, you, know, you got to do it, yeah. you know, and, and it's easy not to. But I think that's, and so that's a big piece for me. It's like, you know, I got to, you know, I, I'm, you, you got to sweep the sheds yeah. you have to do the work you're not above anything you know mm-hmm. and that's important you got to dig your holes you, know, you don't need someone else to do it for you You do it yourself you learn something along the way and you gain the respect of the people around you and that's important if you're going to ask them to do yeah. something you should be the first there you know first person there with them absolutely on that note i want to ask about like the one best advice that you would give to a few different people because you can relate to so many of these people so the first one would be to an aspiring affiliate owner. So to an inspiring affiliate owner, 
I think the biggest piece of advice is I know you have passion. Mm -hmm. I know you love CrossFit. You need to learn how to run a business. Passion and excitement is not enough anymore. Mm -hmm. It was 10 years ago. But there are legitimate businesses out there being run and you need to be able to know how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, ask for help. Employ other people to help you with that. Mm -hmm. But you can, and, and here's the thing, you can start and it be successful in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But in order for you to create a sustainable business, I mean, most, most small businesses don't last more than, I think, three years. And past five years, I think like 90% of them fail. Wow. Like it's like the stats are out of control. Yeah. And so how do you get past those huge thresholds? And, and I think you just need to understand that it's a business when it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of other things that come into play that you, do, you don't know. Mm -hmm. And do your research. It's like you, it, you just can't find a building and open up a gym. You have a lot more to do than that. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing. And, and you're not going to become a millionaire opening up an affiliate, you know, in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to happen. You'll live a good life. You'll enjoy it. You'll be able to do what you need to do. But you need to ask yourself this question. Where do I want to be in 10 years? If you, if you don't want to be coaching full time, mm -hmm. how do you plan on doing that? And I just don't, you know, I think that that's some, that's a big, that's always a fear of mine. And so, you know, on that, that piece of advice is create a business plan. Mm hmm like create a, a 10 year, 15 year business plan. And that will give you some direction of mm -hmm. maybe where you need some help yeah. or maybe if it's, you know, is it for you? That's true. I think so many people see other affiliates and they think, oh, it seems really easy. You know, this is just what you have to do. And they don't think through all those steps beforehand and then realize, wow, this is a lot more. I bit off a lot more than I realized. Right. So true to think about it all ahead of time. Yeah, and it, it's because sometimes you you see what you don't want to see sure. on paper, and that's sure. you know, and that's part of life. Good advice for just about anything. <laughs> yeah, true. Think yeah, about I mean, it beforehand. Yeah, think about it beforehand and have a plan. Yeah. How about to an aspiring competitor? Hmm. So the aspiring competitor, I think it's it's different than it was when we started. Yeah. Be prepared for the long game. Mm-hmm. Your career at the high level, if you make it, won't be long. Master the fundamentals. Move well mm -hmm. and slowly increase volume. We all did that in mm -hmm. our generation, not on purpose, just indirectly. Yeah, That's what everyone forgets. Mm -hmm. We didn't start out working out like maniacs like we, we have to now. Mm -hmm. You slowly built on that from the demand as it increased. So true. And, you know, you got to do the, the unsexy stuff. Mm -hmm. You got to learn, like you, like I was like, literally everyone go to your level one because <laughs> learn how to move well, learn yeah. how to keep your heels down, drive your knees out, lift your chest up. If you want to compete in the world of CrossFit, educate yourself on CrossFit. Like that's the first thing I did. I was like, I want to compete. I'm going to go to my level one so mm -hmm. I can learn because they're the ones that are doing the competition. Mm -hmm. Read every CrossFit journal. Or literally. I mean, like it's. I mean, I've seen competitors that had never picked up a D ball before and like they've been doing CrossFit for two years or mm -hmm. like they've never done certain movements. I'm like, do you read? <laughs> you know, like, you know, like they're blown away that dumbbells are a part of CrossFit. <laughs> like the, what have you been doing? The first CrossFit workout ever done, yeah. fast and heavy, dumbbell thrusters and running. You know, like, so I think like know your history, mm -hmm. move well, slowly increase that volume and understand that it's a low trajectory to a distant horizon that you may never get to. Mm -hmm. And that's like any sport now, mm -hmm. you know, you have to enjoy it. You have to love it. You have to love it. And don't be so naive to think that you're going to go to the CrossFit games in a year. Mm -hmm. No one says they're going to go to the NBA in a year, NFL and NHL and CrossFit's getting there, you know? Yeah. So it's, um, it's, it's become, a great point. Yeah. It's, it's kind of show that respect. Great point. How about to someone who's just starting out with their coaching career? From the, the novice, the young coach, I think the best piece of advice that I think you could give someone that I would have given myself is, again, master the fundamentals, mm -hmm. know what you don't know, 
limit your scope. Teach. Again, I, I go back to level one. It's it's part of who I am. It's mm-hmm. in my DNA. Know those nine fundamental movements. Mm-hmm. Memorize them. Understand them. Teach them well. Practice. Literally, go in front of a mirror and demonstrate movements. Mm-hmm. If you want to be a professional in our field of coaching, you need to practice, study, get feedback. Mm-hmm. Limit the scope. Don't coach huge classes. Coach small classes coach one-on-one stick to some basic movements and know what you don't know you it's okay for you to have something come in front of you and you not know it Mm -hmm. that's okay you know and and i think if you live by those fundamentals which by the way are glassman you know those are glassman said that it's in Mm -hmm. in his in his article and and i i love it because it's i mean you could say that about anything and it'd be really good advice yeah and again just I see this trend happening in the world of, of from competition to coaching is don't forget your roots. Mm-hmm. Learn from CrossFit. Stay there. Mm-hmm. Learn. There's walls outside of the world of CrossFit. Love that. And, and, and challenge yourself and learn different things. But remember the basics. Mm-hmm. And most people don't need more than that. Virtuosity. That's it. Do the common uncommonly well. And that's a life's work. So start there and it's, and it's, it's okay to have your note card next to you. It's okay to write things down. Everyone does it. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be a good coach day one. Probably not on day two either. Yeah. That's all right. But if you care about people, you'll be fine. You know, you know, know their name, know what they do for a living, call them, email them, text them. That's why CrossFit works. That's mm-hmm. why good coaches are good coaches because they care about people. And so if you, if you have that, then allow it to be a, a slow process. I love it. Last one is that person that we were talking about earlier who is maybe just peeking into the gym and thinking, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this is for me. I think for that person that is afraid to take that first step into the gym, this always comes across the wrong way, but I truly mean it You know, in, in, in the positive way of that. Mm-hmm. Don't worry because no one in the gym mm-hmm. is worried about you. Yes. And everyone felt like you or feels like you. But no different than when you were, if you were to take that theoretical step in the gym, mm-hmm. what would you be concerned about? Everything. Oh, yeah. That's what everyone else is concerned about. So they don't have the scope to worry about this person. This that's new person. Yeah. yeah. And, and trust that you're not going to, be great Mm -hmm. and you're not going to get exactly what you want out of it. It's going to be difficult. But the fact that you actually make that step is that's all that really matters. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the act of actually wanting to do something more than what you're doing, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that that's, if I can impress upon that and that person just walk in there, you know, sneak in there, whatever it may be, understand that, if you want to be left alone, you'll be left alone. Just just moving in the right direction and mm-hmm. positive movement. Where mm-hmm. and it, you don't need to be running, you don't need to be sprinting. You can just be walking, yeah. crawling, but you're doing something good. Uh, you know, and it's 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 truly not about you, which is which is I think that's the hard piece. Everyone think, oh, it's all about me. No, yeah. it's 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 about this greater purpose. So true. And we were talking. I was talking to Kelly Jackson here yesterday everyone's intimidated the first time. I mean, not everyone, but a lot of people are intimidated the first time they walk in. She said she was a, you know, a collegiate athlete. She played soccer. And she, the first time she went into a, a CrossFit gym, she was super intimidated. Yeah. She did one workout, didn't feel like it was right for her. It took her a year to go back. Mm-hmm. And then when she finally went back is when she really fell in love with it. Right. So everyone has some level of intimidation when they're trying something new. It's, it's unfamiliar. It's uncomfortable. Um, and to also know that if you have a first experience that doesn't sit well with you, it's okay. You can try again. Every affiliate is different. Every coach is different. You, that's the beautiful thing about CrossFit is you can find your, you know, place where you feel like you're comfortable. Yeah. We, we, we had recently someone that just came to Reebok and they said, I tried CrossFit and I got injured at a bad experience. Hmm. You know, and it, it's hard to hear because it's like, when you hear that, it's like, all I want to say is like, all I want to really say is, well, 
that won't happen here. I'll take care of you. Mm-hmm. But I also have to respect the fact that like you have a bad experience, you have a bad experience. Yeah. Um, you know, but what I always, I equate that to is like, you know, I played, I played sports growing up mm-hmm. and I had years where I hated playing hockey. Mm-hmm. Some years I loved it. What was the difference? The coach. Mm-hmm. Hockey's not a bad sport. Hockey didn't hurt me or make me unhappy. Yeah. It was the coach. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and I think that, and that's how I try to explain it to that person. It's like, yep, it's, and that's part of the deal and that's going to happen sometimes, mm-hmm. but it's no different than anything. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's the, how do we disseminate the information? What's the vehicle in which that's happening is it matters more than the actual piece, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, you know, that's, and that's, Hey, f- if you walk into a gym and you're nervous and someone comes up to you and says, hi, what's your name? People introduce themselves to you. And then they make sure that you're, you're taken care of. You're in the right place. Yeah. If that doesn't happen, go to another gym. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. You know, are their bathrooms clean? Right. If they are, you might be in a good spot. You know. <laughs> yeah. If, if not, go somewhere the little else. Things. That's it's right. True. Very true. All right. I want to finish with three questions that I ask everyone on the podcast. Okay. So, first one is three things that you do on a regular basis that okay. have the biggest positive impact on your health. Three things that I do on a regular basis that have a positive impact on my health. I think. I mean, I think the big one is CrossFit, Mm -hmm. you know, and and my consistency in that. I think a second one is my nutritional regimen. I'm I'm fairly strict. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, you know, I really, I... I'm about as boring as it comes. Mm -hmm. So... And by that, do you mean like, are you doing the zone? Are you just eating quality foods? What is your approach? I'm pretty true to uh, like the, our prescription with CrossFit is meats and vegetables, mm-hmm. nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch and no sugar. And, you know, I, I zone for five years. I don't, I don't weigh and measure every single thing now, but from a quantity perspective, um, probably very close. Mm-hmm. I weigh and measure once in a while to mm-hmm. see where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's pretty consistent. So, you know, we're pretty close to keeping the intake levels to where it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from, from a third perspective, I think what's important for me, it's being positive. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't find much need or room to be negative. I really like what's, I don't get it, <laughs> you know? So for me, it's like, I really just, I, I'm, I generally love every part of my day and what I do, Yeah. you know? And that's, um, that's, that's probably my favorite aspect of anything. It's like, what's like, man, this is great. Like, you know, it's like, it's easy to, it's, it's so easy to just fall into like, oh, I'm up early or blah, blah, blah. But like, this is awesome. I'm going to the coach, mm-hmm. listen to a good book right now. I'm going to get to watch the sunrise over, over the water in Boston. Like, it's cool. Like, so I think that's important for me is like, I'm just, I just, I try to be positive all the time. I love that. Um, next one is one thing that you're working on, something that you think would have a big impact on your health, but you struggle with it. I think for me specifically certainly now with this sort of a new transition is the, this this ominous word of balance mm. uh, which <laughs> i definitely don't have um but speaking of which what does austin do to relax do you do anything that to relax or like well that's probably why this is the area, is the area. Of, of improvement because okay. you know like no i don't i don't do much and like james alluded to as you said you know it's like <laughs> if he stops you know he'll he's dead um <laughs> or just falls asleep right now um you know i think for me it's you know, spending more quality of time with my wife. I think mm-hmm. it's something I really, you know, it's, and, and it's really simple. It's like, Hey, put the phone away, put the electronics down and just sit down and be present. Mm-hmm. That's something that I'm, I'm, I'm working on and not good at. Uh, but I mean, it's a struggle for everyone now. Yeah. There's just always stimulation everywhere we go. Yeah. And that's, that's something for me. It's, uh, and, cer- and certainly you'll sort of like, you know, now that I'm 30 and, you know, kids are on the horizon at some point where it's, I think that's something that's really important for me to, to my wife's unbelievable and, and probably too understanding. I think sometimes <laughs> we're like, most people look at Mare and my wife and just like, how do you deal with this guy? You know? And like, <laughs> you know, so I think that's in us, for me, that's a big focus because yeah. obviously, you know, down the line when kids come, like kids don't have that perspective. You're there. Or you're not. Yeah. You know, they yeah. don't, they don't care where you are. Yeah. They don't care that you're at what work you're or you're working yeah. out. All the um, other people that you're helping. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, where's that yeah. you know so i think that's something that for me is a that's that's the big focus that's in the crosshairs i love it last question is what does a healthy life look like to you i think a healthy life is one 
that's positive, not only for yourself, but those around you, Mm -hmm. um, where you are in some way, shape or form enhancing your quality of life and others around you in your ecosystem, if not broader on a daily basis. Um, because if everyone did that, I think that really cool things would happen and, and it would be a, a more positive experience day in and day out. So true. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Austin. Awesome. This yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. This one definitely ranks near the top of all of my favorite episodes because of Austin's incredible insight and the perspective he's gained from playing so many roles in the CrossFit community. I hope that we see more CrossFit affiliates in the corporate world, making employees healthier and companies stronger, just like Austin has talked about at Reebok. I want to know, what ideas do you have for corporate wellness? Let me know on social media using hashtag pursuing health. Also, a quick reminder, if you haven't yet checked it out, make sure you head to healthyselfreset.com. If you're interested in dialing in your nutrition with me this January, we are providing a 100% free program with 28 days of recipes, meal plans, shopping lists, and workouts you can do anywhere with no equipment. The reset starts January 15th, so head to healthyselfreset.com right now to get signed up. To make sure you never miss an episode and to receive exclusive content from me, head to my website, juliefouché.com and subscribe to my email list. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe and consider giving the podcast a five-star rating on iTunes. Also, don't forget to share your stories. If you or someone you know has used lifestyle to overcome a serious health challenge, please send me an email at info at juliefouché.com. I'll choose some of these inspiring stories to share here on future episodes. Don't forget you can train with me through Beyond the Whiteboard by visiting trainwithjuliefouché.com. Thank you again so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time on Pursuing Health. This episode is brought to you by ButcherBox. ButcherBox delivers 100% grass-fed and finished beef, free-range organic chicken, and heritage breed pork directly to your doorstep on your schedule. I personally think meat can have a place in a well-rounded diet, but there's a huge, huge difference when it comes to animals that are raised in feedlots and fed primarily corn and soy and routinely given growth hormones and antibiotics, and those that are responsibly raised, fed their natural diet of grass, and never given growth hormones or antibiotics. ButcherBox gives me some peace of mind, knowing that I can trust my meat is the highest quality out there and will also taste amazing. You can order curated or custom boxes of meat, and they always come with recipe ideas for you to explore. My husband Danny and I have paired our butcher box meats with vegetables from our local CSA, all but eliminating the need for grocery shopping. Butcher box is extending an awesome offer to you for listening to Pursuing Health. You can get $20 off your order plus a free order of their delicious bacon by heading to butcherbox.com and using the code JULIE20 at the checkout. That's butcherbox.com and code J U L I E 20. Hope you check it out and that it makes your life a little bit easier just as it has done for me. This episode is brought to you by Mobility Wad. Do you struggle to get into good positions in your training and workouts? Are your movement compensations causing you undue pain and grief? MWAD's belief is that every human being should be able to perform basic maintenance on themselves. For nearly 10 years, Mobility Wad has been the go to for the world's best athletes and teams. Do you know what hundreds of Olympic and world-class athletes, professional teams in the NFL, MLB, basketball, hockey, rugby, and soccer, and dozens of universities all have in common? They use Mobility Wad to train and compete at their best. I first took Dr. Kelly Surratt's Movement and Mobility course in 2013, and since then have read his books and followed his videos for ideas on how to address my own movement restrictions. But sometimes having all this information can become overwhelming, which is why I think the real genius is in the MWOD subscription. As part of this subscription, you have access to not only hundreds of hours of video content that can be filtered based on your specific questions, but also a daily 10-minute Mobility WOD video. You just log in and follow Kelly's instructions as if he is there coaching you in person for 10 minutes per day. You may pick up certain exercises that you wish to incorporate on a regular basis before or after your workouts. But at the very least, by following this daily program, you know you are addressing a wide range of movement patterns and body parts on a regular basis without having to think about it. I often do these sessions first thing in the morning or before bed as a way to wind down from the day. 
In addition, you have access to an on-ramp sequence and a 14-day mobility challenge that helps you understand the basics and identify the areas you personally need to focus on. You can lean on the MWOD community and discussion boards to learn from others who have been through similar situations or injuries. And if you need more personalized help, you can use the MWOD list to find a like-minded practitioner in your area. It's easy to become part of the Mobility WOD community, but for being a Pursuing Health listener, you can receive 20% off an annual membership with code Julie Fouché. That's J-U-L-I-E-F-O-U-C-H-E-R. Just visit www.mobilitywad.com. Full potential, full power. Full power.